When you talk about lunch in Nashville, you're talking about meat and threes, a style of dining that can only be described as truly Nashvillean. One protein, three sides, whole fully vegetables, and pure satisfaction. Meat and three is at its heart country cooking. It's the big lunch. It's the stick to your ribs comforting food that just hugs you a little bit. Meat and Three is more of a food way than it is just a style of restaurant, right? It's the food that people had when they grew up in the mountains or in rural areas or in farming communities. And then as people started to make their transition to the city, they brought those culinary traditions along with them. The simple idea is that you go up and it's a cafeteria almost style setting where you grab your tray and you kind of walk down a line and you say, hey, today I'd like the fried chicken and then I'd like it with mashed potatoes and green beans and corn casserole. It's a little bit more than what you would think cafeteria food is. So to quote the great John Edgerton, it was back in the day when lunch was dinner and dinner was supper. And I think what he meant, you know, giving him farming community, you'd been up since four and then you'd eat lunch and then you weren't worth much after that. Nashville was kind of founded on uh, meat and threes. So a lot of people have trusted kind of a meat and three philosophy. You would always prepare fresh vegetables, fresh meats from the farm, and especially in the South is what they grew up on eating and kind of still come in, tell you how great the food is or they come in here and tell you, hey, the macaroni could have been better today. They know it as good as you know it. Silver Sands is more soul. It's more seasoning. One most important thing is, I don't let anybody season my food but me. Not only can you taste the season, you can taste the love that's being done cooking it. Because if you don't have love, your food ain't gonna taste good. It's not. The clientele at Meat and Threes is typically wide and varied. Some Meat and Threes were even said to be the first restaurants to embrace desegregation and offer a mutual table for all. Everybody is welcome at a Meat and Three. You know, whether you're a blue collar construction worker or if you're the governor of the state of Tennessee. Lunch was kind of the great equalizer of everything and you'd work really hard throughout the day. So when you ate lunch, it was like a coming together, you know, factory workers to farmers to politicians. And it's just like, you know, no matter who you are, you always had to see the table for everybody. I have people in Canada, I have people in New York. Every customer, treat them with respect because you don't know what happened before they came in here. They made it a point to come to Silver Sands. They stopped here to eat your food. Meat and Threes were founded on at-home ideals, so it's not surprising to see a different spread of food every day. At home, I remember, you know, that's how moms and grandmoms or whoever was the main cook in the family would plan out their weekly meals. One day might be fried chicken day, one meat might be meatloaf day, one meat might be catfish day. It was probably a way to drive business to the restaurant by offering something special on a different day. It was just an extension of their home. Well, I get up at 2.30 every morning. I got my pot of grits on, my pot of oatmeal on, my pot of rice on. I have my onion fried potatoes in the orange skillet. My apples cooking on the eye. They're all cooking at the same time. It's, it's crazy, you just gotta have a system. Today's Tuesday, I get here. I got here at five this morning, we prepared meatloaf, and then we have the batter grouper. We had the chicken fried chicken. Instead of deep frying it, we cook it on the grill. And I like it not as crispy as the fried chicken, also doesn't quite dry it out. And then we make a sawmill sausage gravy for that. Really no way to ever explain besides the controlled chaos. I think what's exciting now is that you're seeing these new generations not only preserving it, but starting to take those restaurants to the next level, put their little imprint. You know, being a second generation, I think you take a lot more pride in what you do. You know, I feel honored to be able to allow it to kind of added a few things of my own, even, even though according to my dad, I still have never got it quite right, but you know, that's just my dad. I guess it kind of helped make me who I am. I worked with my mother for 13 years. It looked like a piece of cake, what she was doing. But when I stepped into her shoes, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. People of all races and all socioeconomic backgrounds come to these restaurants because they are a place where community can be built from the ground up. Food breeds community. It's all about the food. It's all about the food. Good company, good food, good music. <laughs> I'm a big fan of No Secrets. I think people that have secrets in cooking are, I, I really think they're